Chapter 25 And that ended my report McMahon Sama. Miklatov stared at the kneeling man in front of him with pensive face, his hand rubbing his goat. I see. He hummed aloud, so when everyone going to return. Judging from Aaron Pendragon Sama condition that already healthy enough I believe we can leave any time. Tomorrow won't be impossible. Then tomorrow it will be. Miklatov nodded, tomorrow noon around, 3 lunar time. That wasn't bad time, between noon and afternoon so everyone can see they coming back, make sure all the royal candidate and Aaron Pendragon Sama arrive in time. Yes McMahon Sama. The messenger nodded again. Miklatov about to dismiss him after that since nothing else is matter however he paused as he recall one thing that quite standing out when the messenger told him his tale about their battle. One thing before you may leave Jaeger Kuen. He said, may I know what you think about Aaron Pendragon Sama? The man in question looked up, his back become straight and his eyes gleaming with undecipherable light. For a moment he only silenced before smile grow from his face. I believe, what the prophecy told us right. Aaron Pendragon Sama will lead Lugnica to the new age along with the new king. Jaeger said, his voice was completely filled with belief and faith, he is divine or at least powerful as people expected, I believe when the time come Lugnica once again will rose and even surpassing their prime condition. Miklatov eyebrow quirked a bit, his old eyes staring directly to the man's and he found nothing but full devotion and loyalty, a full belief that the young man will bring Lugnica to new age. And what of Emilia Sama? He continued. The half-elf? Jaeger inquired, his eyes blinking once and he put thoughtful face, well, Emilia Sama truthfully not as bad as I thought. She save our life numerous time in battle and she is very gentle. His mind goes to the time when he was healed by her, yet despite the gentleness there also steal inside her. He recall when the young half-elf yelled at one of soldier, encouraging everyone that they shouldn't give up. This brought smile to his face and he looked directly at the old sage eyes, with Aaron Pendragon Sama behind her, I'm sure one day Amelia Sama can become great king. It will take time, I'm aware how public will react to her existence but I have faith in Aaron Pendragon Sama that his presence will be bring good things to her and the people also going to see her in new light. Is that so? Miklatov hummed again, he did not speak for few seconds, then he give another nod to him, very well, that was all I want to know, you can leave if you want Jaeger Kuen. Yes McMahon Sama. The old man watched as the messenger gone, goes back to Priscilla Bariel's land to tell everyone in there the message he gave. So what do you think Bordeaux? Miklatov asked as he turned to his fellow sage council. I still think what you just did was deed of a fool and very risky. Bordeaux answered with disapproving face, arguably, the result is positive but the fact you still make such big decision without consulting or informing anyone first was not very bright and disrespectful move. Well you can't blame me completely of that, Aaron Pendragon Sama appearance to my house two days ago itself is very surprising. Miklatov said as he recall his conversation with the young man. And you comply instantly to his demand to increasing army and giving extra weapons to them. Bordeaux replied with glare. Not end in there. They only informed about this yesterday. Doesn't he know just how big his move is? He send army and provide weapons without telling or consulting to anyone. Things can't be done that simple for someone at his stature. You heard what Jaeger just say before. Miklatov gestured to where the young man before, a monster, one on whole different level, killing dozens of men just by it born, it make all those who have divine protection become useless and it grow stronger with everything it ate. His eyes turned to Grimm as he recall how Jaeger shivering and stuttering when he told about that part, and it coming straight to us by using Hakugiai as catalyst. What do you think would happen if that come true? Bordeaux tried to imagine the scenario. He imagined how the guard caught sight of Hakugiai, then they all ordered the royal guard to prevent the beast from coming. However giving the beast able to split itself things will become very hectic for them and in the end they were forced to call Reinhardt to kill the demon beast. And when it did, that monster come out. Bordeaux shuddered visibly, Reinhard van Astria will be the first to fall if that happen. Then the beast would become more powerful after consuming sword saint that blessed by the sword's god. If beating it is already hard enough when it just born how difficult it would be after it consume Reinhard. The idea was so horrifying and the veteran warrior forced to admit that the capital could be not survived from the attack. Alright, I admit that was very bad image. Bordeaux lick his lips that dry, but it doesn't change one thing that become problem. Why you giving your help to him just like that? He asked again, for what reason? It couldn't be because he knew of this creature in first place right? The look that given by him by his colleague make Bordeaux eyebrow raised in alarm. B but how could that be? He asked in shock, such creature. How could he know about it? 
even he hardly believe of such thing exist. Monster that able to made people mad just when gazing at it, able to render those who have divine protection to be useless and growing stronger with each second. Such monster is like nightmare given form. It existence is almost like the witch of envy herself or some kind of demon god. Miklatov stare at his fellow sage council for a few seconds, his eyes held serious gleam in there. It because Aaron Pendragon Sama claim he has vision about the future. What? Bordeaux asked, his old face showing shocked expression. You heard me right my friend. Miklatov answered grimly, the night before he come to my place, he claimed that he has seen a monster that come with Hakugiai. The vision not clear to him but he said he get the general idea that they need to kill Hakugiai before it can reach capital. Of course normally I won't believe by such thing, you know me enough Bordeaux. However Aaron Pendragon Sama is still mystery even to us, our attempt to contact and find more about him itself is not giving any result, his full abilities is also unknown. One thing that we sure, the dragon, Volcanic Asama is indeed capable to see a glimpse of future just like when he prophesied the incoming of evil dragon and royal candidate, so I thought perhaps his ability is also similar like Volcanic Asama in a way. But to my surprise, he claimed that he never had that kind of power in first place. That was the first time he got vision, however he apparently not stupid enough to risk it and so he approached me. And if that vision proved to be false then it also fine since we still going to end Hakugiai in a way. Bordeaux started to see where his friend going after getting the story, and we also can use that to present Pendragon-sama existence to public and start the royal selection. What better than bringing head of the beast that has claimed sword Satan in past to show symbol of strength after all. However if that was true like now then. Then Ludmika will fall. Miklatov finished grimly. Bordeaux pursed his lips into thin line, the image itself is already very bad, but knowing that almost happened had Aaron Pendragon not worn them is like punch under the stomach. This actually not your idea isn't it? Bordeaux asked after small moment of silence, I mean, using Hakugiai to introduce him to public and all? Miklatov smiled slyly at his friend, while I do have similar idea but the one that's suggesting it first is not me but him, so yes, the credit fall to him. Bordeaux rubbed his chin after that, he did admit such thing never crossed to his mind, leave it to Miklatov to have that kind of idea. Truly this man sometime few steps beyond them and have unique perspective. I'm not surprised that somehow Pendragon Sama have such idea but to hear it directly still something else. The moment he laid his eyes to him Bordeaux knew that Aaron Pendragon is someone who is not ordinary, he is a great person. There's something about the man that's standing out from others, making him look above everyone. He don't know what but perhaps that was what called charisma. Regardless whatever that is actually not baseless seeing their situation now. He proved to know how to make quick move with very short time and said the move is also very efficient as well. With his ability to see the future and strength, we clearly have bright future. Bordeaux commented with smile, but it quickly died as he recalled the situation, now if only he allegiance himself to other candidate than Amelia Sama. He murmured. Your prejudice showing again my friend. Miklatov admonished, didn't Amelia Sama already show you her resolve, we already witness her declaration to the public. Yet you still judge her unfairly. I do not have any ill intent to her. Bordeaux said with glare, though it witters slightly at Miklatov quirking eyebrow, all right, all right, maybe a little, but only a little. He added with huff. Miklatov shake his head, among all sage council Bordeaux is actually one who have quite contempt opinion about demi-human. However the prejudice he hold is not something that without base. The man was soldier during the demi-human war, he was commander of his own brigade and his vice commander who like brother to him was died in the battle, killed by one of the demi-human leader Libra Fermi. Normally such mindset wouldn't let Bordeaux to be one of the sage council, someone in that kind of stature cannot be allowed to have petty mindset after all. However the thing is, sometimes such pettiness is necessary, because that kind of thing is what make Bordeaux often see what other not. Not to mention Bordeaux himself is capable to control his own grudge toward other, proof of this when he apologized to Amelia and admit his fault in front of public during the royal selection, showing that the man prejudice did not blind him from knowing and admitting which is right and wrong. I respect Amelia Sama, I can tell she is very sincere and genuine about her resolve. Bordeaux commented, but no matter what her existence is something that cannot be taken lightly by other. Even if she has the backing of Aaron Pendragon, the man who have the blood of the dragon, things still won't be good for her. Truthfully this whole plan could backfire to them, what if when they saw the half-elf defended by the descendant of the dragon they thought she enslave her? After all it take the dragon, sword saint, and the sage to defeat the witch, not only the dragon, it mean that the witch was more powerful than her. 
If that happened then the public backlash will be very severe, chaos will erupt in the kingdom, people will started to become more afraid. Miklatov aware of that, he knew the risk the moment Aaron Pendragon decide to stood behind Amelia, he knew that while this is big opportunity but at same time it also can be something that will bring this kingdom to ruin, he knew all of that since the beginning. And because of that he simply smiled. Well, try to say that to Yeager Kuhn moment ago. Miklatov said as he gestured to where the messenger moment ago, three days ago he laughed and even called Amelia Sama, half demon, when she mentioned to lead kingdom but now? I. Bordeaux can't argue with that, the result was pretty much very effective and downright shocking to be honest, it could be brainwashing magic. He reasoned, however his voice not as firm as before. We both know Jaeger Kuhn moment ago is anything but controlled. Miklatov said while making sound that similar like snort, as matter of fact, let's agree that man moment ago seems like just find the goal of his life rather than brainwashed. Bordeaux opened his mouth however no sounds come out from him and Miklatov continued. Beside the decision is not in our hand, Pendragon Sama himself is the one who decide who will be the one he support, the prophecy pretty much say so. And with that the veteran man's shoulder slumped, he leaned in his seat and let out sigh. Hate and loath to admit it but Miklatov was right in that part, the decision was not in their hands and they're also living proof that accepting Amelia just moment ago kneeling before them. I see you're still sly and cunning as ever even in your old age. Bordeaux said with wry look. And you also fast to adapt like always. Miklatov returned with chuckle. Well, that is that. Bordeaux sighed and massaged his temple, by the way, speaking about prophecy, what about Aaron Pendragon Sama ability to see the future? Does that mean we won't need the dragon stone anymore? No, I believe it not that simple. Miklatov shook his head, Pendragon Sama claimed that ability is new for him, it mean he just got it recently, perhaps he get it when he touched the royal badge and awoken something inside him. We can't be certain that Pendragon Sama will see further danger in future. So we wait for a sign. Bordeaux hummed, well, that mean it just like the usual. Yes, it seems so. Miklatov answered. The bald sage turned his face and stare at the outside through the window, his expression is pensive. Then he let out another sigh, well, at least in next few years things won't be boring. Miklatov actually snorted at that, that my friend, I can agree with you. Hmph. Bordeaux allows smirk to appear on his face, amused at his response. Speaking about won't be boring. Miklatov leaned forward slightly, does the other has give their response regarding the request from Gustico King to coming here? Bordeaux smirk disappear and he put thoughtful face as he recall the North Kingdom request to talking about trading goods, Ackerman and Gunther seems accepting the request while Dieter and Jelgal appear to oppose it. He said, majority for obvious reason seems approve of Gustico's king intent for visit since we about to open this country from isolation once more and it would be good to begin with having foreign king to our homeland, and by showing that our kingdom still prosper even without help of outside that can be seen as sign of strength. Well, I can't argue with that logic. Miklatov hummed, but at same time this could be a trap. Most people think so too, however they seems become confident and assured after Pendragon Sama make his appearance. Is that so? Miklatov rubbed his beard and crinkling his eyebrow, truthfully after what they seen he can't blame them. Miklatov himself remember how the power that come out from Aaron Pendragon when he touched the royal badge come upon them and to be honest, never in his life he feels such tremendous aura. Even when one of four great spirits make it appearance and show it power he able to remain calm, but in face of aura that Aaron Pendragon emitted? Miklatov felt he would fare better against the great spirit rather than him. So yes, his friends and other nobles' belief is not baseless, and after hearing Aaron Pendragon just wrestling with Hakugiai and slam the beast down from the sky, Miklatov sure that what he felt during the royal selection is not only a hunch. We can't delay the answer anymore. Bordeaux said, it already comes since week ago, any more than this can be considered as rude and insult to Gustico. Something that unnecessary as it could made their relationship from neutral to bad or worse, provoking war. You're right, we have to give our answer today at most. Not to mention they're also travel from here to Gustico itself, the distance will take days, let call the other then, we will talk about it more while also preparing messenger to them. At same time they also going to talk about this hunt obviously, the result is very satisfying after all. Now Aaron Cohen, let's see how you will continue from here. Miklatov thought with wonder and hum. Stay still you brat. Priscilla chided as she forcefully hold the half-elf hand, I'm checking your measurement and trying to find good dress for you. Ouch. Priscilla San. Amelia winced at the grip, it wasn't gentle at all. I can get dressed by myself. I admit that you, 
or whoever dressing you, at least have some sense in fashion but you had been staring at my collection for five minutes and has yet to make any decision. What else you would call that other than incompetent? The half-elf grimaced at the harsh response, she lower her head and make slight pouty face. Well her fashion is mostly handled by Puck or the twin, they know which cloth the best for her. However right now Rem is busy, she is currently preparing foods for the party that soon will be held, and Puck. Well Puck is right now busy. For some reason her surrogate father seems distracted by something, he rarely talked to her in this last two days. He's still his cheerful self of course and also will protect her in case something happened but. There's something that bothering him obviously and he asked to left alone for a moment and will tell her when he done thinking about whatever that bother her. Amelia worried about him but at same time she don't want to pry too much, Puck deserves some kind of privacy after all, he rarely had that since he always share thing to her and now he want to have one, Amelia wished to respect that. She have faith he will tell her soon after all. How this could happen you ask? She was on her way to Aaron's room after she heard he had finished bathing, planning to have chat with her but she meet Priscilla's on her way and asked does she ready for the party and about her dress. Naturally she said no, it's still few hours before the party after all, and she also don't have good dress with her other than one that's similar in style with her current attire. This of course made Priscilla's nostril flare. That fox, lioness, and rat has their own caretaker and dress already but you don't. I won't allow those who challenge me in throne to appear undignified. That was what the woman say before decide to drag her roughly to her personal changing room. Well, I guess preparing early won't be that bad. The half-elf thought with sigh as she stare at her nemesis who looking over dress after dress that will suit her. Too short, too colorful, too big in chest area, won't match with hair, too revealing. Priscilla murmured as she look her collection, most of them is red and black, those were her favorite color after all but she do have outfit in other colors. However the problem is that their dress size were not matched so she have to open her old collection when she less endowed and perfect than her current self. And the problem with her old collection is there few of them that given by her so-called ex-husbands. Seriously they all have no taste, it make her wonder why she not burn them in first place. She will do that after this of course. Hmm. Her eyes glued to one particular dress, she then pull it out and look at the design for a moment, then she glanced at Amelia and back to the dress, this will be good. She exclaimed as she turned to the half-elf and shoved the dress to her, here, take this, you will wear that for tonight. Amelia stared at the dress in her hands and her eyes widened slightly. It was beautiful and good dress, she admit that, Priscilla-san, I don't think dash. Ah uh, Papa Pap, you don't have to think, just accept. Priscilla said with finality in her voice, if you don't then I won't allow you attend tonight. Amelia closed her mouth after that, her right eye twitching. Despite just how ridiculous that statement is but for some reason the half-elf believed the woman will carry her threat for real. I guess. Thank you then Priscilla-san. Amelia said with slight gratitude. Hmm, I do not did this for you for your information. Priscilla replied as she brushed her hair elegantly, I have my own reason. Is that so? Amelia tilt her head a bit, well, I guess I will go back to my room. Priscilla merely grunted while unfolding her fan and start to cooling herself, despite the temperature is not hot in the room. Amelia take that as sign of approval and started to leaving, not like she have anything against her she just oh who she is talking to, she does have something against Priscilla. For some reason there's something that irked her about the older woman, perhaps it was her attitude to viewing Aaron like a property, but whatever it was the half-elf not feeling quite comfortable with her. That light was perfect right? Amelia freeze when she just about to reach the doorknob. What? She asked as she turned around and faced the woman in red and black. That light. Priscilla repeated, and Amelia noticed that the woman was smiling, there no hint of arrogance or smugness that always adorning her face. That expression made Amelia pause as she realized just how beautiful Priscilla Bariel truly are, and for a moment she can understand why there so many men who wishing for her hand in marriage despite she was a widow. That smile though gone as soon as it appear and that snapped the half-elf from her awe. Yes. Yes it was perfect. Amelia admitted, her mind also briefly wandered to the two person that stood by her side at that time, wandered to the holy light that show glory and mankind deepest wishes. It was so beautiful. No, more than that, it was more than beautiful. Saying it beautiful would be insult as matter of fact. But even so do you know? That light can be blinding as well. Amelia blinked, her violet eyes meet with the woman's sharp reds. Blinding? She asked. You do not see it do you? It was statement that come from her not a question, well, giving you and everyone too entranced by each of your own desire I don't think you would be able to. 
The half-elf spun her body fully, now stand face to face with her rival to reach the throne and frown slightly, what I don't see. But Priscilla only silent, she did not answer that question and only stare vacantly back at her. It lasted for almost a minute to the point Amelia decide that it was better to leave since she won't get her answer but again, she was stopped from doing that by soft chuckle that came from the older woman. I guess that light affect me as well, for me to consider telling you this. Priscilla said with slight softness in her voice, normally I going to take him away from you since you are still too immature and blind to see what behind the light. It wasn't hard to guess what she mean, only one person that Priscilla want after all and Amelia found herself tensed, her grip on the dress she clutched tightened. I won't give him to you. She stated strongly, Aaron is my friend, he is not a piece of object. And yet you don't know what he truly like. Priscilla replied, while he know everything about you. Amelia bristled at that comment, I know what Aaron is like. She said. Her mind recalling everything they has went through together, their daily routine in morning accompanying each other, their time study together, their laugh at dinner, their teasing and tickling to each other. All of those precious time and memories flashed inside her mind in less than a second. Beside what do you know about him anyway? Amelia asked back. I know more of him than you. Priscilla answered, I can tell what kind of person he is just by listening to his conversation, his behavior, and his way to fight. However above that all, I know him more than you because I see what he not allowed others to see. Amelia inhaled breath sharply for a second after hearing that. She don't know why, and even the words confuse her but for some reason there's something bad gnawing inside her stomach. What? What are you talking about? My generosity only extend to there. Priscilla answered swiftly, that should be enough clue very enough as matter of fact. She then started to walking, passing through the half-elf who in front of the door, however just after she opened the door and about to leave she give one last look to Amelia, he will break in the end, that was inevitable no matter what, no one can change that, however do know what come after that is something else. She tilt her head and smirked, and Amelia feel chill to her spine for some reason when saw that smirk. It wasn't arrogant, it wasn't smug, it wasn't mischievous. No. It was predatory. Until then, I will lend him to you. And do be careful during the backlash, a tame dragon he is now but it doesn't change the fact he's still a beast, powerful and fierce one. She stated, and tell me brat, have you ever seen a fierce beast you were sure would never bite? The bloodstained bride asked, her red eyes look menacing for a moment, because I have not. She answered her own question while Snap close her fan and crinkled her eyes further. Then she walked forward, leaving the half-elf who clutched the dress that given to her and grit her teeth internally from the confusion and frustration. 575 people go out to hunt Hakugiai the one of three great demon beasts, each of them trained warrior and magician who already has their own experience, they all professional men who has went through few fight and battle on their own. Only 122 that returned. From more than 500, only one quarter that returned. Almost or more than half was lost in battle against Hakugiai, the number probably reaching 280 or so. The other hundred or more was gone when the Eldritch Abomination come out from the beast body, all of them eaten by the horror or went kill themselves after the Eldritch Monster whisper madness to their ears. And that beast not even come out to the world for longer than five minutes, probably only around three as matter of fact. Despite their win now, but it nothing more than Pyrrhic victory at best. The situation was too grim after all, most people not in mood for celebration despite they gathered together and it can't blame seeing the amount of people they lost in this expedition. They're not just normal people as well. They were friends of a friend, they were like brother to other, they were precious to them. And they're gone. Worst some maybe doesn't even remembered by them anymore, those that gone could be their sister or brother, their companion for their whole life until now, friends that was there for them ever since the beginning. But they doesn't know that because they don't remember them anymore. Hmm. What with this gathering? The people's stupor were broken when some voice spoke loud enough to get their attention, they all turned to the source and majority of them hold their breath when they saw who stand before them. The savior himself. No longer he clad in armor but he wore some kind of blue garment outfit that looked like very fitting for royalty, there stripes of red on his long sleeves followed by black space and white outline. The outfit itself is not that extravagant to be honest, however for some reason it still make him look so regal to them, despite they're no stranger to nobility but for some reason the man that stand before them now make all noble they had seen become so pale, it's like they are only ugly imitation compared to this man. Pendragon Sama. One of them mutter the name. That's right, the man that stand before them now, Aaron Pendragon, the one who rumored as the descendant of the dragon, the son of Lugnica's protector himself. 
it was rumor that spread among the merchant from few days ago that those who would become new king of Lugnica will be supported by the descendant of Dragon itself. It was silly, the idea of someone who related in blood and possessing power of the dragon come down and helping them seems too much. However after what they saw two days ago during the battle against Hakugiai and that demon god who almost swallow them all. That rumor not baseless and silly anymore. The son of the dragon tilt his head, his green eyes scanning the people that gathering, his face show nothing but calm expression. I know that many of you actually don't want to be here. He began, his voice strong and loud enough to heard by everyone, and to be honest, I can understand. We may won the battle, but the cost was too much. Ichi close his eyes and he looks also mourning for those who fall, it was Pyrrhic victory, and it not something that can be easily dismissed by saying, let's move on and start celebrate, or something like that. They started to lower their heads at that statement. What he just said is clearly conveying what they currently feel, yes, this celebration actually idea from their hire, Priscilla Bariel, Anastasia Hashin and Crush Carson themselves. While they not that opposed to the idea at that time but after giving time like this they started to recall what they has lost. However, he raised his voice in here, startling everyone, that is exactly what we going to do. He declared, many of you going to disagree but that was fine. However before you all go on moping and bury yourself in grief, do recall how those who has lost will response to that. Did they want you all to look down like this? Did they want you all to bow your head to grief and regret? Did they want you all to sulk around when the future of Lugnica started to become bright? No, of course no. They don't want that. They don't want you all wasting your time like this. Remember that when you all goes to this hunt, you all know the risk to facing it, however one thing that you also should remember is none of us go to die but to win. And here we are, we won. With sacrifice, yes. But know that after this, no one need to fear of losing their memories about their precious person, no one need to fear every time their mist or fogs appear in their journey their beasts that lurking around, no one need to fear that they will be forgotten entirely by those who love them anymore. With each word, each sentence, they started to rose one by one, their head tilted up and they stare at the man who has stand with them against the beast and save them from the demon's maw. Every single thing that come out from his mouth seeped to their brain and mind, and they all realize just how right he is, just how true and right everything that he said to them. And above all that, in this battle, know that no one who's died is forgotten. He continued, his voice still firm and strong. He then pull out papers from his coat and raise it, we know that there are around 500 people that join the expedition, however we don't know the details thanks to Hakugiai's power. And those that gone also have their name erased from the document that listing the participant of this expedition, and it was clear they also gone from the other as well, we sure of that. As matter of fact, from this document there are only 354 names. However that won't be problem, because I have the original document, complete with everyone name still inscribed in there. That brings surprise to everyone. It was well known that everyone who eliminated by Hakugiai has everything related to them erased from the world somehow, that was make the beast very terrifying. The idea that something can erase someone from people's memories and everything that related to them is so horrifying, it almost like act of gods and so inhumane. H. How? One of soldier asked, how you can possess the document that's still complete? The son of the dragon lips curled to small smile, then he extend his other hand and light gathered from there, it flashed briefly before it died and when it did, there's some strange object in his hand. This is something that I have. It has ability to cuts out a piece of time and freezes it, or at least something that's similar like that. Before we go I already cuts part of time when I read that document and store it inside here, and I already checked it as well, the names inside this document here still full and intact. Everyone stare at the object in his hand with astonishment. An item that able to cuts part of time. That was sound so powerful. Tomorrow morning we will go back to Flugel's tree. He said and he dismissed the item from his hand, we will inscribe all the names of those who fallen in there as a memorial for them, they all will be remembered forever as hero who fell in battlefield. And for you, all of you who survive, enjoy your prize, live for the sake of their memory, become their legacy, carry their will. He then turned around and everyone see their blue-haired maid standing on his side holding a drink, a familiar maid that has been there with them during the battle. It was at that time that everyone realized their maids and butlers near them, somehow they managed to slip to get close to them, each of them holding drinks that reserved for them. The charismatic man that stand in front of them take the drink that offered and he turned back to them, then he raised his mug above, so live and be happy. Eat and drink to your content. For them. For you all has earned it. After saying that he drink the beverage then he give them smile and nod, for the future of Lugnica. He roared. And everyone cheered after that.
for what else they could respond him with. What else they could offer to his heartful and inspiring speech. What else they could offer in facing such truth. That right now it was their jobs to live and be happy, not just for their own sake, but those who has fall for them. Pendragon Sama. Aaron Pendragon Sama. Hail the protector of Lugnica. For the future of Lugnica. Go Onii Chan. Certain cat demi-human shouted while standing on someone's shoulder. And so everyone began to regain their joy, they all take the offered drinks and foods and cheer to their content under the light of stars and moon. Well. That was more pain in ass than I thought. Aaron said flatly, not even bother to put it in polite sentence as he let out small sigh. Language Aaron Sama. Rem admonished with smile and no heat in her voice, but Rem think Aaron Sama was very cool, not just that Aaron Sama managed to shoot straight to the problem but Aaron Sama solve it using similar method, negative against negative then deliver the positive words. She exclaimed, Aaron Sama truly great, then again, Aaron Sama's Rem is always the greatest. Ah. Is that so? Aaron feel his cheeks warmed slightly at the blue oni praise, well, it not that hard actually, all you need is to think it from third person perspective then you start to choose the best act. Rem stared at the blonde knight for a few seconds before she shake her head, Amelia Sama was right, Aaron Sama's sense of, common, is truly distorted. She spoke with sigh, but it's okay. Aaron Sama still the greatest. She added while beaming. That. Was not much of comfort actually. Aaron deadpanned to the maid. Seriously, his sense of common is not wrong. It's them who have strange mindset. Don't compare modern man like him to medieval like them. Speaking about Emmy. How is she? He had leave dealing to explain bird and bees to other, the pseudo saber was all but accepting at that time as he pushes the whole crew out from his room and saying aloud that he don't want to deal with that kind of shit and not to mention he need to go to toilet at that time. Say what do you want about his escape from explaining things to Amelia but he is too young to explain reproductive organ to someone else. He will deal with it when he become father, not at his current age obviously. And he also never intend to become one so soon. Nope. Ah. About that. Rem put unease look REM. Rem and the other think it wouldn't do any good for Amelia-sama to know where baby come from for now. What? Why? He asked with incredulity, Rem, with body and face like Emmy, there will be hundred guys who lining just so they can court her. Rem understand what Aaron Sama trying to say. However Rem did said, for now, before. Rem think it would be better to teach Amelia Sama when we back at manor to avoid any awkward and uncomfortable atmosphere in here. Ah. Aaron put understanding face, that was good move from her, good thinking Rem, sorry for sounded a bit loud back there. No problem Aaron Sama. Rem said pleasantly, can Rem get pat on the head? Huh. Sure. Aaron did what the girl asked and the Oni let out pleasant noise the moment he did that, her smile also show content expression which make the blonde resist the urge to glomp her. My maid can't be this cute. He squeed inwardly. He imagined how all otaku or his friends that fan of Re-Zero back home would react if they see this, and it make him grin internally at their envious and jealous expression. He coughed to regain his composure and retract his arm from her much to Rem displeasure, where is Emmy now? Amelia Sama was with the other royal candidate. Rem answered. She did. Aaron blinked, what's she doing with them? Just a little chat between women. Another familiar voice chimed in and the duo turned to see the head of the Karsten house approach them. No longer she clad in her boyish attire but she wearing a dress, black dress off shoulder dress that covered by pink soft tunic bolero with tie. Not far behind her there Anastasia Hashin herself who wearing similar style of dress, except her colors is white and there also scarf covering her shoulder instead of bolero. Her star hair clip also not there, allowed her bang to frame over her beautiful face's left side, there also white fur choker and necklace hanging over her modest chest that slight revealed. Crush San, Anastasia San. Aaron greeted them, his eyes studying the women keenly, you two look beautiful tonight. He complimented with sincere voice. Thank you Aaron San, you look handsome as well. Anastasia said in happy voice. You think so? Crush tilt her hand and look over her dress and figure for a moment, I was thinking to wear my original outfit but the other insist that should wear dress. She hummed, and Anastasia San is right, you not looking bad in their Aaron Pendragon. She added while looking over his outfit. Thank you. Aaron responded, though to be honest, Crush San I was just like you, Originally I want to wear my armor but since this is quite occasion I try to clad in better outfit. 
Not really, this outfit actually the same one that he wear beneath his armor, he just removed them and have it cleaned a bit to make it look more neat. He never noticed it actually since they always covered by his armor but who know the costume beneath them is this neat. Originally it only a cheap and half-baked outfit that made for cosplay show but when transported here it become cloth that seems made from very famous brand. Erin also briefly noted that Crush Karsten outfit is similar like the one she wore when she drank with Subaru. Well, giving you have to give opening speech I guess that was rather logical. Anastasia said with smile, by the way, that was nice one before Erin San, I'm very impressed, you really have your way when talk to public. She praised. I agree. Crush nodded in agreement, especially the part where you keep the original documents, I never thought you will do such thing when asking me those documents. Ah, I also agree with Crush San. I'm quite interested in the Matia you used. Well, it's something that I'm not sure in first place. Aaron said, the item that I used is indeed special, however my main motive truthfully is to see does Hakugiai's eliminating power work on it or not. He told them, obviously it is not judging by how the complete document is still exist in here. He waved his cell phone that appear on his palm at his call. May I see it Aaron San? Anastasia asked. Perhaps later. He answered, it's not like that I don't want to show you but to be honest this thing is more like personal diary, one that advanced since it have picture and things like that. You use a device that able to cut fragment of time as a diary? Anastasia asked in bewilderment. Forget about that. Crush said in equal voice, I'm more surprised that you have things like a diary in first place. Aaron let out short laugh at the duo reaction, well, it's true that this thing can be used for other function, and originally it can do more however the other functions mostly is not available for now. Crush shake her head, feeling slight exasperated at the man response, honestly, your strange person Aaron Pendragon. On one hand, when you speak in front of them before I found my heart stings felt pulled for moment back there, you really charismatic and know how to done your job Aaron Pendragon. She complimented with smile, however at same time you can be quite foolish and have mind of jester. The green-haired woman say that while giving a praising gaze to him, however she blinked when noticed their strange look given to her from her companion, more from Aaron who gaped slightly at him. What? She asked them. Did. Did you just? Aaron was loss of words, did she really just say that kind of thing with straight face? My, you certainly can be quite bold as well Crush San. Anastasia commented. Crush blinked again and tilt her head, what are you talking about? She asked in pure confusion. Yeah, no wonder she miss Fourier feeling alright. She is that dense apparently. Aaron thought dully. He don't know what to say in here, usually it was boy who dense to girl feeling but now the role got switched. He don't know how to describe it in word, nothing. He said plainly. That was lie. Crush replied with annoyance. It mean to be one. Aaron deadpanned. Crush right eye twitched. This man. He can be so annoying sometime, like I said, a jester. She huffed. Aaron shoot her grin and give wink to her, obviously amused at her response anyway, where felt, Priscilla San and Emmy? Why, we here of course, are you that impatient to see my splendid figure oh my dragon? Aaron ears twitched, so do his eyebrow. He spun and granted by sight of certain widow who clad in her red and black Victorian dress like always. And Aaron tried, he really tried, he really did but for some reason his face scrunched to particular expression without his control when facing her directly. Pfft. Felt who clad in her yellow dress that similar like one she wore during royal selection let out funny voice from her mouth as she stare at the young man face, big bro. The hell is wrong with your face? She asked with voice that seems barely restraining laugh. Aaron Pendragon what with that ugly expression? Crush asked in bewilderment. You look like just forced to swallow very sour lemon while gritting your teeth. Anastasia remarked with voice mixed of astonishment and seems holding back laugh judging by her hand that cover her smirking lips. Priscilla meanwhile far away from amused as her eyebrow twitched irritatingly, I see you still maintain that ugly expression when I'm around. Sorry, I tried. He said in flat voice. He lying in sorry part but he telling the truth in tried part. Crush added absent-mindedly. Thank you Miss Obvious. Aaron deadpanned, prompting glare from her. Wow, cranky much. Felt asked, she then shook her head anyway, that was badass speech before. She said with grin. You heard it. You kinda loud so hard to not hurt it. Aaron smiled a bit, well you can't make speech with small voice. He said, where is Emmy by the way? Well. Felt grinned in here, her red eyes twinkling with mirth, 
why don't you see her by yourself? She asked as she stepped aside. Aaron tilt his head and see what behind the little girl and Priscilla, his breath an instant seems frozen in his lung after that. Amelia stood in there, beautiful and entrancing, she clad in violet frilly off-shoulder lolita dress with skirt that reached just below her knee with black outline, revealing part of her chest and her smooth and tender pale healthy skin. Her silver beautiful hair was combed down fully with part of her bang tied into braid. And seeing the half-elf like this it remind Aaron the reason why Subaru fall over heel to her. The beauty that's so inhumane and very much to the point almost made her like an angel given form. The woman that her beauty stood out even among other royal candidate who considered to be women with their own standing in term of beauty compared to other. Um. The half-elf face adorned by slight red, she rubbed her sleeve and fidgeting as she shyly looked at Aaron a Aaron. H how do I look? She asked timidly. The question seemed snap the man from his daze and he blinked, his face flushed briefly as he realized that he was staring at her. He quickly repressed that emotion and gave the girl his best smile. You're beautiful Emmy. He complimented genuinely. The silver-haired girl's face turned to pure scarlet at the praise. For some reason she feel their butterflies swimming or is it flying, inside her stomach just by hearing those words. Ah ah ah. Tt thank you. She said shyly and inwardly chided herself, why was she stuttered like that? Why you? You also dash. Ah by the way Aaron San. Anastasia cut the half-elf from speaking further by took his arm and wrap it to hers, there are some of my people who want to talk with you, Mimi to be precise. Aaron instantly perked up at the cat girl named Mimi. Yes, she was quite worried about you, I'm sure she will be happy if you talk or play with her now. She said while pulling him. Aaron about to follow her however suddenly another arm snaked to his right, and he turned to see Crush Karsten holding him from leaving while glaring at Anastasia. That was rude of you, Anastasia Hoshin. Crush commented, to interrupt Amelia-san for your personal interest like that. Oh my, I'm afraid I don't know what are you talking about Crush-san. Anastasia replied with smile. Needless to say Crush doesn't need her power to tell her that part was lie, her eyebrow narrowed slightly at the purple-haired girl, I see that's how you want to fight, then. She pulled Aaron from her, making the young man yelped a bit, Aaron Pendragon, Wilhelm want to talk with you, I believe it quite important for him. She said. Now, now who is rude here Crush-san? I'm the one who asked Aaron San first. Let go of my arms, both of you. Aaron said flatly, and before you thinking to joining Priscilla San, please note that I will throw the three of you the moment you did that. He added without looking back. The woman in red who about to glomp Aaron from behind paused, then her face turned to one that's similar like a pout. Aaron ignored of course as he pulled his arms from Crush and Anastasia, he give the two women annoyed look. Seriously, what with these two behavior? My. My look crush San, Barry L San you two annoy him. Me? It was you who started it in first place. Crush defended herself. Blaming someone else while it was both your fault, you two really have nerve aren't you? Especially you two in that someone home. Priscilla jeered at them. Crush turned to the orange haired beauty with quirked eyebrow, while I appreciate your generosity while we were in here Barry L San but I believe we actually have right to be in here for few days in first place. Crush San right. We both have right to be here. Wasn't it our agreement in first place that you will serve place and foods for us while we lent our soldiers in this hunt? Anastasia remarked while giving fake smile to Priscilla. That was true, but as someone who at least slightly above normal peasant then you two surely know better to not be rude to the owner's house, or are you two insinuating that you both are lesser women? Priscilla retorted both their shoots with smirk. The three women glaring at each other and for moment there seems invisible lightning flashed between them that collide in middle. This is ridiculous. Crush clicked her tongue and broke the glaring contest. Seriously what the hell she doing? Bickering like this is so childish, she turned to the reason they fight in first plaque Aaron Pendragon you huh? She blinked when she found the man in question not in where he's supposed to, what the? The other two also blinked in confusion as they stare at where the man moment ago, Priscilla immediately turned to Rem who's still standing with smiling face, maid. Where is he? Ah, Aaron Sama and Amelia Sama got pulled by Felt Sama who bored and want to enjoy the party. Rem explained. Their tick mark appear on the trio forehead after they hearing that, that damn rat slash little girl slash man. The three of them thought simultaneously. Their loud chattering and laughter echoed across him, voices that filled with happiness and joy, he even recognized few of those voices. Smell of delicious foods and drinks caught by his old nose, he can tell the feast that served for them clearly is a wonder. 
however such mundane things right now not what he focused into. His blue eyes that sharp and seems penetrating anything solely locked to the other beauty that now lay before him. It was the sun that already started to sunk, it almost night now. He noted just how beautiful such scenery is despite it just simple one. It truly been a while that since he saw the sun sunk down with peace in his mind. Recalling it once again he never remembered just how peaceful his time was, only recently that he able to fully relax like this without anything burdening his mind. How long has it been? He thought about it for a moment before come to an answer, 14 years, it was 14 years. The last time he felt such content and serene was when his wife still alive, when he was sit with her and watching the flower together. He feel tapped to his side and broken from his stupor, he turned around and see familiar face stand before him, offering him cup in his hand. A drink grandfather? He stare at the offered beverage, his nose caught slight familiar scent and he scrunch his forehead, you do know I'm not drinking alcohol. Neither do I. He replied with smile, but I believe tonight is special occasion, wouldn't you agree? He asked, beside, there not much of alcohol in here, I pick the best taste with smallest alcohol. He added while pushing the drink a bit to him. Wilhelm glanced at his smiling grandson for a moment, blue eyes meet another one, then he let out small grunt and take the drink, I guess I can agree with that. He said softly and bring the liquid to his mouth, tasting it, this. Is quite adequate. He commented while looking at the wine in new light. Isn't it? Reinhard asked with twinkle in his eyes, I just got the protection that allow me to pick the best wine. Wilhelm looked at him with slight bewilderment not like it visible giving his stoic face and raised his eyebrow a little. It's special night. Reinhard repeated, his smile turned to small grin, so I believe I'm allowed to abuse my ability, no? Your ability is yours. Wilhelm said, there is no need to limit yourself, as long as you take responsibility for what you did then you are free to do what you want. He lectured in firm yet also not unkind voice. Tell that to the elders in capital. Reinhard retorted with no malice. You do know that those who olds can be a fool sometime. They are blinded by their own experience and achievement. Wilhelm scoffed slightly, you're still young, and the time you live at also peaceful. Not need to restrain yourself very much in mundane things. Do not mind words of elders too much. So I shouldn't listen to you then? Wilhelm blinked his eyes once, a sign that he surprised by the witty rebuke. He corked his eyebrow and stare at Reinhard who has his grin widened slightly. That was a joke grandfather. He said. I know that. Wilhelm replied, I just surprised you make one. He commented while giving him a praising gaze. I try to be more open-minded to those kind of thing. Reinhard responded while taking sip to his own drink, is it good? He asked. I'm not much of joking person so I can't tell. Wilhelm answered bluntly. Is that so? Reinhard hummed, how about you trying to make one then grandfather? The old warrior about to refuse that request an instant however his mind briefly recalled the last words that he heard from his wife Phantom and he retract his retort. Well, everything have to start from somewhere so. Let's see. Wilhelm racked his old brain, trying to find joke or something like that. He know he not much of joke person and usually only silence, something that his wife always lectured about, but surely he know one right? He is not that bad after all, ah, got it. He said aloud, someone just got hit by explosion, where he go afterward? He asked. Reinhard put fingers to his chin and make thoughtful face, after a moment he decided to give up and shake his head, where? Everywhere. Wilhelm told him with straight face. It was bad wasn't it? The sword saint smiled to him, it was strained expression, honestly. Yeah. Wilhelm closed his eyes and draw one sharp breath, sorry. He apologized. No, no, it was. It was bad all right but not that bad. Reinhard said in comforting manner, it just too morbid, perhaps you can tone it down a bit in that aspect. He suggested. I won't make another one. Wilhelm said sharply, and probably will never. Once is enough, he doesn't have talent in that aspect so not need to embarrass himself by making one. Reinhard let out forced chuckle at that and the duo fell to another silence. Internally Wilhelm sighed, this is awkward, and clearly more harder than he expect all right. His socializing skill is never the best after all, their reason why he always silence, even when spending time with his wife and decide to take sword rather than becoming merchant in past. Hmm. Is that Feldsama? Reinhard mused aloud and breaking the old man from his stupor. Wilhelm following his grandson gaze, and indeed, walking around the yard is the youngest candidate of royalty, accompanying her is Aaron Pendragon and Lady Amelia. 
The youngest person seems dragging the soul man while chatting in what looks like exuberant manner, the half-elf who following them meanwhile only smiling in exasperated way. As if sensing they were observed, the blonde face tilted to their direction and Wilhelm caught his eyes widened slightly in recognition. Aaron then talked to Felt who paused and turned to them as well, the girl face scrunched to annoyance when noticing his grandson. Felt Salma looks like enjoying herself with them. Reinhardt said with smile. Wilhelm only grunted in response, his target of focus is not the little girl or the half-elf but is the man who with them to be honest. He have something to say to him. Something that he want to say this noon when he heard him waken up but refrain to do so since perhaps he need more rest. Now might be a good chance to talk with him. Granted it would mean he have to excuse himself from his grandson and they just start talking, however it would be better than make things awkward like this. However before he can excuse himself he noticed that the trio make their way to them while giving greeting to other who call for them, Aaron Pendragon is the one who mostly get it. Felt Sama, Amelia Sama and Aaron. Reinhard greeted them with smile, good evening, you all look lovely and handsome tonight. Good evening, thank you Reinhard. Amelia replied kindly. And you look boring as always. Felt deadpanned, not even bothered to be polite to him. Aaron Pendragon meanwhile only tilt his head in accepting manner, good evening to you too. He replied, then he turned to him, and good evening Wilhelm San. He greeted. Good evening Pendragon Sama. He dipped down his head slightly in respectful manner, and to you too as well, Amelia Sama, felt Sama. He added while looking to the duo. Good evening to Wilhelm San. Amelia responded back. Felt only grunted in uncaring manner. This girl really have bad manner does she? Well, it can't be blamed though, not like Wilhelm care very much. How you're feeling now Aaron? Reinhard asked. I already feels fine ever since I wake up to be honest. He answered before he turned to Wilhelm, I believe this is the first time we able to talk properly. That was correct, I believe we meet briefly when I visit to Roswell Sama's mansion, but we barely exchange words in there. He recall their short meeting at that moment. Even in Battlefield they also do not talk properly since they were too busy, it was not place to chat after all so it can't be blamed, it's good to see you healthy once again. Aaron chuckled, like I said, I'm already fine when I wake up this noon. He said anyway, to be honest I do not intend to come here. No offense to you Wilhelm San but felt here. He gestured to the petite girl and pat her head, making the shorter blonde to slap his hand and hissed at him but he ignore it, don't want to talk with Reinhard. You right I didn't. Felt said with Huff, we already spend time too much together and I feel bored. Do you know how rare for me to get out from his damn sight like this? Felt Sama you exaggerated things. Reinhardt spoke softly, I did not always following you everywhere. That because I rarely able to go outside you dimwit. These two strange but cute couple bickering aside dash. Erin promptly raised her hand and just in time to block the little blonde kick. The former thief glaring at him with look that promising pain. I swear bro if you call me and this creep here like that once again I will dash. I actually come here to see Wilhelm San. Or are you ignoring me? Felt shouted indignantly. Amelia and Reinhard giggled at the duo interaction, apparently amused by the petite girl reaction, Wilhelm must say that it was a bit refreshing to be honest. Come to see me. Wilhelm asked, and what this old man can do for you Pendragon Sama. I heard from Crush San that you have something to say to me. He told him, then he glanced at Reinhard for a moment before shift his gaze back to him, but pardon me, do I bothering you two right now? No, not really. He answered, we didn't talk about very important thing moment ago. He said. I see. Then what you want to say? Aaron asked, or do you prefer to speak it in private? No, here is fine. And with that Wilhelm bow his head down, low enough to reach the level of Aaron's stomach. For what you done and show to me, I'm forever will be in your debt Aaron Sama. That words was spoken with sincere voice and pure honesty. Aaron Pendragon has given him peace and what he wanted the most ever since 14 years ago. This young man has show and guide him back to the path that he has lost for very long time, giving his life meaning once more. And for that Wilhelm van Astria will be forever in his debt. Raise your head Wilhelm San. The old man did as he asked, his eyes gazing up and meet the young man's. There is no longer playful or soft light in his eyes, only power and strength, his face also show nothing but calmness. Your gratitude, I accept them with full heart. He spoke, his voice were firm like a king, what you saw in that light. Know that it is not fully my deed, I do not deserve all the credits. He stated, what you saw in there is not act of God but it was your own light. 
He declared, your honor and achievement, everything you has done and accomplish, your very glory. His green eyes peering over his blues, I simply show them back to you. Then small smile fluttered to his face, know that I do not seek anything from you, at least not yet, perhaps in future I would need your strength and assistance but not for now. Yes, Pendragon-sama. Wilhelm bow his head in gratitude once again, he feels so touched by what he just heard. His own glory and honor. How long since he has heard those words? He feels like he just got knighted once again for some reason. Same things occur to all of you. Aaron said aloud to everyone who witnessed what just happened, I accept all your gratitude, and like I said, in future I may going to need your help or assistance but not now. He repeated, since now is time to celebrate. Their roar and cheer of agreement as people began to raise their mugs or cups to the sky. They all yell in gratitude and words of encouragement to the man that stand before him, and he gladly received them with smile and wave of his hand. Wow, you really become something big bro. Felt said on his side, her voice was dry for some reason. I know what you mean and trust me I enjoy this as much as you enjoy wearing that dress. He whispered to her through corner of his mouth while keeping his smile. Wilhelm feels slightly surprised at that response, he don't like the attention. Oh. Well, while it unusual but it not that strange. He, himself also don't like attention too much in first place despite he is one of famous figure in Lugnica. Well anyway that was done. Aaron turned back to him and Reinhard, is there something else you want to say? Not like I mind talking with you but felt here is Dash. I heard their bard wandering around here this afternoon, and I'm looking for her. Felt cut him off. Bard? Well. He did heard about it, there's some bard come to estate because she heard about Aaron Pendragon however she got ushered away by one of Priscilla Burial's staff since she bothering them. Felt Sama the bard already ushered away few hours ago, were you going to look for her? Reinhard asked. Oh she will be here alright. Felt snorted, that big breasted prick not being subtle holding this party. She probably going to sneak in here just to meet big bro here. She patted the man in the back while saying that. Wilhelm stared at the young man who rolling his eyes but seems doesn't mind the girl attitude, his eyes briefly wander to the half-elf who only silenced since the beginning for some reason, and he blinked when he noticed the girl behavior. Her face was red slightly and she fidgeting while close to Aaron Pendragon, she seems want to say something but she doesn't know what to say. No, it's more like she don't know how to enter the conversation but not in there, judging by the way she's staring at the young man, Lady Amelia seems. Ah, I see. That kind of gesture and behavior. Only one thing that can cause such thing. Love. Wilhelm can't help but smile at that thought. Young love. It never ceased to bring warmth to his heart whenever he see one. Well we will go now, is there something else you want to say Wilhelm San? Aaron asked. I do, it's for Amelia Sama. Wilhelm said, making the half elf turn to him. Huh? Yes Wilhelm San. She asked. It's hard and won't be easy. Wilhelm spoke in calm voice, however know that you have very high advantage, so don't hesitate to strike when there is chance, I'm sure nothing bad will come even if you fail. Just by talking for short time with him Wilhelm can tell that Aaron Pendragon won't think much if Amelia behave in, odd, manner, he's sure of that. The half-elf blinked once, twice, seeming oblivious to his advice but it only for moment as her violet eyes widened and her face turned to scarlet. Wilhelm smiled in amusement, something that was rare for him in recent years, and give brief nod to her. Hmm. Do I want to know what is it about? Aaron asked. Nothing. Amelia squawked and she start to push him, come on Aaron. I also want to see the bard. Felt. Let's go. Hey, hey not need to pushing, I can walk on my own. The elder gentleman watched as the group leave with warm eyes, to be young and cheerful like that. He is not the most socializing person in past but even he admit that he have those who he consider to be precious, and those memory bring joy to him. What was that if I may ask? His grandson question broke him from his stupor and he turned to him, nothing, just advice to lady from a rambling old man. He said. I see. There another silence as they staring at somewhere else but each other, holding cups that filled with delicious drink. This is awkward isn't it? Reinhard asked with dry chuckle. Yes. Wilhelm admitted but say nothing else. It not like he don't want to talk with his grandson, he do want to, to reconcile with his family, that was what Theoresia wish after all. However it clearly not easy, Wilhelm was all but close to them after Theoresia's death, he even not visit Reinhard when he was still a child, when Heinkel began to hate his own blood. 
He was too caught in his grief and desire for revenge, he barely talked to his son and even offered only few words of comfort when his son wife. And Reinhard. It was month ago the last time they talked after for very long time, and that only because he told him that he managed to found Felt, the daughter of royal family that has been missing, a girl that Wilhelm supposed to find when Theoresia went to hunt Hakugiai, a mission that cost him his beloved wife. He won't admit it aloud but Wilhelm feels slight anger at that little girl, nothing much of course and he also know how to control himself, however that doesn't change the fact he had that negative feeling for her. A sign that he truly has been consumed by his grief and anger for very long time to the point his wisdom started to get clouded. But not anymore. I'm sorry. Reinhardt suddenly said aloud, his gaze locked to the liquid inside the cup he hold. Sorry. Wilhelm asked. I was the one who took grandmother blessing. He murmured in bitter voice, had I not perhaps she wouldn't die in that expedition. No, you shouldn't apologize. Wilhelm replied after brief silence, it's not your fault, you never knew about it. He was what? Five years old at that time, just starting his sword training. And that thought made Wilhelm feels like he got punched in the stomach once again. Five years old. Reinhard only five years old when their family started to get ruined and not long after that he become the next sword saint. At such young age. I'm the one who should be blamed. He said in sad voice, I'm older than you and your father, yet I act like nothing but a children throwing tantrum. Focus to nothing but revenge. He admit all of that with a shamed feeling, I should be better than that. He murmured. It was never Reinhard's fault in first place. Never Heinkel's fault. It was solely him. No. The strong and firm voice of his grandson make him turn to Reinhard who stare at him, his blue eyes meet his, strong, filled with conviction. Grandfather it's not only your fault, it's father's as well, so do I. He said and raised his hand, don't, while I aware that I was a child at that time but it doesn't mean that I shouldn't do something when I grew up. I also to blame for focusing too much to my duty instead caring to my family. The kingdom is better family for you than us at that time. Wilhelm replied with shameful voice, you have right to ignore us since the very beginning for what we done to you. But as knight himself I shouldn't even think so. Reinhard rebuked, even if the kingdom is my main priority but I should at least make attempt to reconcile with my family. You. Wilhelm paused, then he closed his eyes and take deep breath. The argument won't getting anywhere, even he can tell that just by these short chat, you're stubborn, just like your father. He muttered softly. And my father get it from my grandfather. Reinhard replied in equal voice. Wilhelm stared at him for a few seconds before he chuckled, you seems to be like joking more now. I try to. Rain had said while grinning slightly. Wilhelm only shake his head at his response. He stared at his own drink for a few seconds before asking, what do you see in that light? Reinhard stiffened, his grip on his cup tightened, something that Wilhelm noticed it but not make any comment. After a moment his hold loosened and the young red-haired knight tilt his head to the sky, to the stars. You, me, grandmother, and father together. He said softly, when we spending our time in one of grandmother's favorite flower garden at my fourth birthday. Wilhelm closed his eyes, his brain started to digging through the memory, never once he ever forget about his wife so should thing won't be forgotten as well since it related to her. And he found the memory he looking for. You were fell on your grandmother favorite flower. He said. And I was very afraid after that. Reinhard chuckled as he recalled the event, how he was close to tears, Fearing his grandmother will punish her, I was thinking she going to spank me. You know well your grandmother won't do that. Wilhelm chided softly, she was that kind after all. He remember well how Reinhard closed his eyes when Theoresia call him, expected to be punished, only for her to ask him where he got his bruise on his leg and treat him kindly afterward. I. I never forget about that. Reinhard said, his voice slightly choked for some reason, it. It always there, on the back of my mind but. But I never looked to it anymore. He murmured. He had gave up. He had gave up to fix his family, to make it into one once more. That bitter fact made Wilhelm heart wrecked further with guilt and his grip on his cup tightened. He will fix this. Grandfather. Yes? Reinhard smiled at him, would you mind to tell me more about grandmother? I do not know much about him and my memory about her were a bit hazy. Wilhelm smiled back to him, it was kind, soft, gentle, and benevolent. Expression that actually he rarely shown to anyone save for those he love and consider precious. Of course, let me tell you how we first meet them. He will fix his family. Wilhelm van Astria swear on his wife name no matter what, he will make everything right once again, 
not just for her sake, but for those he love as well. And so the grandfather and grandson chat happily together under the light of stars and moon, surrounding by laughter and cheer of those who's celebrating. You're lying. Aaron deadpanned. Lying, she lying. Mimi agreed from top of his head. Yeah, she is lying. Hitaro said as well while sitting on his right shoulder. Indeed, that was very impossible, so you must be lying. Tyvi added from Aaron's left shoulder. The girl that seems not older than 12 years old child have her eyebrow twitched, her yellow eyes glaring at them and her cheeks were puffed. I'm not. I'm not lying. She retorted, I'm really 21 years old. Aaron stared at the little girl in front of him once again. She had pigtails, and under her light cloak, she had dancer-like clothing that was decorated with ornaments that used nuts and animal bones. She was short, but her hands and legs were long, and her exposed skin had a healthy brown color. She was a girl that really did give off a feeling of a vagrant traveler. And she probably only four foot tall or so. No, no, you're clearly mistaken. Aaron said while waving his hand, seems not bothered by the extra weight on his shoulders and head, you must be 12, you got your age number reversed, that's why you say 21. What in front of him truly is not the strangest thing he had seen ever since he arrived in here, after all their lizard who wearing cloth and walking with two legs, if that was not ridiculous then he don't know what else is. However it still doesn't change the fact how the hell there someone look like her but 20 years old? A dwarfism? No, her head size is normal, granted her limbs seems a bit long but it probably because she holding her guitar for a years. Aaron murmured while scrunching his eyebrow, maybe there's something wrong with her brain that prevent her body from growing. Oi, oi, I heard that one very clear you know. The bard yelled aloud with indignant expression, that was very rude thing to says to lady. Meanwhile on the other side, Felt, Amelia and other who close watching the interaction with their own conversation. I don't believe it. Felt muttered, she is shorter than me but she is freaking 21. Seriously what the hell is wrong with that girl body? This world have many things, you should expect something that unexpected. Amelia who on her side said with advising look. Yeah, kinda see that coming. Felt agreed, by the way, that was big words big sis. I learned it from Aaron. Amelia admitted with sheepish expression. Eh. So you stole his words. Le main. Felt said that while making face. I am not. Amelia sputtered, her face flushed a bit. Okay she admit she maybe pick one or two words from him but she didn't take them all. She just. Mixed them together. It's not wrong right? Aaron let out chuckle at her response, well, at least it made you stop being nervous right? He asked. The little blonde in question blinked once, then she put sheepish smile and scratched the back of her head, ah, you're right. He, he, he. She giggled a bit shyly, t thank you Aaron Sama. The pseudo saber gives small smile to the girl. When he found the bard with Felt and Amelia, she was bumbling mess and so nervous when she saw him. Apparently she has heard the rumor about him that passed around by the knights who live temporarily in Priscilla's land. And his charisma also seems not helping and make her more nervous. It's fine Liliana, by the way is it okay if I call you Lily? Liliana seems too bothersome and mouthful, seriously. You can call me anything you want. Liliana beamed an instant, she then clutched her chest as if just got struck, ah. The gentle yet firm smile that like a sun in summer. The lovely alive green eyes that look like forest. The soft and smooth hair that seems sprinkled by dust of gold. Strong but also delicate looks that cause men and women to fall. This feeling this powerful feeling. She take deep breath, closing her eyes for a moment before reopen them and she took Aaron's hand, clasping it between hers while meet his eyes, this feeling is love. She exclaimed. There crickets from the background for some reason and everything went silence for a moment. What? Aaron asked again, for a second there he just heard something ridiculous. Did she really just said? It was love. Liliana repeated again, her cheeks flushed red with happy face, there is no mistaking it, I fell in love with your appearance. From her position Amelia feel her right eye twitched at the love word. Holy shit, a confession. A sudden confession. Felt said aloud with surprise, god damn, talk about being fast. Aaron stared at the girl who look only few years older than his sister. He stared, stared and stared. Then he closed his eyes, taking deep breath, and reopened them. My appearance? He asked again, can you explain that? Keep his head cool, he can't afford to lost his composure now. 
WL. Liliana face turned to red air. It just. You. You have appearance of hero. She stuttered A.N. And I've been looking for one. Aaron tilted his head, he was confused, while he had read about Liliana but she was on side story if you recall and he don't remember much about her. Other than she have some stalker looking for her. And why you search for one? He asked again. Because that's my goal. Liliana answered, I want to create song that tell legends, history that continues to remain in everyone's hearts strongly for a long time. Passing down existing songs already is a prideful way of life as a bard. She paused and take a breath, however, if I could, I would like to be the first singer that sings a song that remains in everyone's hearts. I want to sing and pass down the newest, freshest history in this world with my throat, with my tongue. That is my wish. I see. She want to be the first one who sung and spread some legend, to instill new tale and story that would be remembered forever by the world. Well that was actually not bad goal to be honest. Then Chibi Wanichan you're in luck. Mimi said aloud from his head, Oni I Chan here is the newest legend of Lugnika. She declared. Hero who has slay Hakugiai, beast that has terrorized the world for 400 years. Hitaro added with smile as he adjust himself on Eren's shoulder so he not fall. And demon god. Tyvi also added, his hand adjusting his glasses, don't forget about that one, ever. Eren briefly tilt his head to his left, shooting questioning look to Tyvi who holding himself in his shoulder. Demon god. He asked. It made everything who gaze upon it lose and despaired, and it choked those who has divine protection and turned them to useless. Tyvi answered, what else that can match power of divine other than another god? He asked rhetorically. Then he shivered, his blue eyes looked haunted for a moment, no doubt he remembering Cthulhu appearance, though I won't say it was god, more like demon but it was too abnormal and powerful for a mere demon. He murmured. Hench it called demon god. Well, giving Cthulhu real nature, in some way, it can be seen like that, albeit the Lovecraft's great old one is more complicated in reality. But still. Wasn't that too much? Calling it demon god. No, as matter of fact it wasn't. That, Cthulhu, may be only pale imitation than the real one but classifying it as demon god won't be exaggeration. If it allowed to go rampage then there won't be anything left in the end, especially after it consume Reinhardt. He vividly remember the range of the blasphemy monster pseudo-reality marble, it was reached a few kilometer, anyone won't have chance to harm it without getting close thus got exposed to it madness whisper. This is going to create another rumor isn't it? He thought with sigh internally, by the way Tyvi Kuen, you can go back to the ground if you feel uncomfortable. W ah. No, no. Tyvi shake his head, it's for training balance. He said while clearing his throat. Tyvi just too embarrassed to say. Mimi giggled, he like Oniai-chan as much as us. Her brother face flushed slightly and he began to sputter, this make Eren, Hitaro, and those who listening let out short laugh. The pseudo-saber to be honest was surprised when he caught sight of the triplet they started to tackle him, Mimi in particular while Hitaro follow his sister feet after moment of hesitation, he was that shy alright, then after that Taivi also joined, albeit he claim he only do that because to look over his brother and sister. He is Tsundera alright. Aaron briefly glanced to Amelia's direction and he found her to be chatting amicably with Felt and several people, at same time she also seems keeping an eye to him. That was proved when she sneak glance to him and their eyes meet, Aaron give her smile but her face flushed slightly and she quickly avert her gaze away. The blonde blinked. What was that? What with that kind of response? Of all things that he expect that was. Demon God. Are you serious? There is that kind of being exist out there. Liliana asked in disbelief and shock. If that thing not called demon god then at least it is something that five times worse than Hakugiai. Tyvi said in calculating manner. So cool. Liliana swooned with bright expression, handsome and powerful. Yes, yes. You're the one I need the most. Oh Pendragonsana please allow this humble and cute bard to be the one who tell your legend to the world. You do realize that your words just contradicting each other right? Aaron thought wryly as he chuckled, well, I don't mind. The bard let out squeal before she lunged at the man in blue, tackling him and made the triplet that on his shoulders and head yelped while holding themselves so they not fall. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. She said repeatedly. Yes, yes, you're welcome. Aaron replied as he balanced himself, but can you release me now? You will make Mimi-chan, hitaro Kuen, and Turve-kun fall at this rate and we pretty much enjoying where we are now. 
Mimi declared while nuzzling in the man's hair. It smells good all right and there also warmth sensation coming from him for some reason, that is why she and her brothers latched to him, it must be his mana that overwhelming. Ah, sorry, sorry. Liliana apologized as she released her hold, well, then. Tell me how you defeat that demon. And also, do you by any chance have a lover? Aaron blinked in confusion, he can understand the first question but why the second? Why you ask the second? Because love is important. Liliana said aloud, every heroes who went to slay monsters and saving people in the end will always go back to reunite with their beloved. Or at least they would found lover after that. Songs have to like a story so what else better than romance after great and legendary battle? She asked with excitement. Well. I don't have one to be honest. A hero that's still searching for love. Ah, then this bard wouldn't mind to be yours. Liliana declared. What? It will be very good see. A hero who fall in love with bard. And together they travel around the world, creating legend after legends, saving one life from another, and leaving legacy that would be forever remembered. Yes. That would be perfect. You seriously have wrong priority about what necessary in love. Aaron deadpanned. Wanting him to become lover for his money or stature like Anastasia is one thing since it often happened but because he would be a good figure to be used to creating song. That was absurdity on the whole different level. Well then I afraid to tell you little peasant that would be impossible, he is mine after all. Suddenly Aaron feel pair of hands wrapped him from behind, this make the triplets that latching on him yelped and fall from him. The blonde meanwhile has his right eye twitched as he feel pair of soft object pressed to his back, followed by nice and intoxicating smell. Hey! That's our place. Mimi shouted to the newcomer. Oof nonsense, this is more mine than yours. Priscilla San. Aaron sighed, kindly let me go please. In response of that the orange-haired girl merely smirked, then she leaned forward and put her chin to his shoulder, her cheeks rubbing against him and she pressed herself further. How about no? She whispered in low voice to his ears. Aaron feel heat rush to his cheeks when feels her warm breath and her asset. Say anything you want but dear God, Priscilla is one of beautiful women. Hey! Don't touch Oniai-chan like that you bimbo! Mimi yelled as she restrained by Hitaro and Tyvee in order to not reach Priscilla. Ah! Liliana looked disappointed at this, so you already have lover. She grumbled with pout before she beamed, but that's okay. Now tell me how you two meet and become lover. She gushed. Well. Priscilla lips curled to smirk in amusement, it was heaven that will us to meet in first place and dash. Priscilla San, you're bothering Aaron. A firm and strong voice chimed in, interrupting Liliana. They turned and see Amelia stood at Aaron's side and holding his hand. Please stop doing that. She said with look. Another potential lover. Liliana murmured with wide eyes. Yeah, you big breasted prick, stop molesting big bro. Felt also come in with stink look. Hmm. A rat and brat. Do you two think you have a chance against me? Priscilla asked while keep pressing herself to Aaron, she started to rub her cheeks to him affectionately. Priscilla San. Aaron warned, his voice tight and stern however that a bit ruined by the blush he have. Amelia scrunch her nose a bit and she feels something burning inside her. When Anastasia Hashin kiss Aaron this noon she was almost lost control for some reason, as matter of fact she was sure she freeze part of the room unconsciously. However somehow there's something that irked her more when it come to Priscilla Bariel, she don't know why but she seems less tolerable to her when she come to Aaron, especially after their conversation when she lent her the dress she currently wore. Aaron is her friend. She can't just touch him like that. Meanwhile all people who watching the conversation started to whispering. God damn, Pendragon-sama so lucky. Well, he is handsome after all, girls surely will flock to him. Amelia-sama really look lovely tonight. Girls fight. Girls fight. Felt Sama is cute too, trying to get her, big bro, attention. Aaron of course not deaf to those whispers, his right eye started to twitch. Great, this is the last thing he need, a rumor that he is some kind of playboy or Casanova. This have to stop now, gods know what damage it will cause us in future. However apparently at that time his luck decide to give kick to his fate dash one might interpret it as blessing though. My, my, then what about if I join them as well? Another familiar voice joined the fray and everyone, save for Aaron who groaned as he know just who that person is, turned to see two beautiful women in there. You all seems having fun without me. Anastasia Hashin commented. 
a fox and lioness. Priscilla narrowed her eyes, humph, even if there is four of you it won't be matter. Don't include me too please. Crush deadpanned, I just come here to see what the commotion about. She then shoot dry look to Aaron, of course I should knew in first place it was you Aaron Pendragon. Five girls. Liliana murmured as she stared at the group who now started to arguing against each other with single man in middle, one hero, five girls. Her lips slowly curled to grin and she shaking with excitement, yes. This will be good idea. The dragon and his five maiden. What a wonderful story and song it would be. She declared aloud. It was safe to say when the song done it has been altered many times by Aaron to make sure it won't paint him as someone who lustful or some kind of man who have harem to satisfy him. Well. In the end the party wasn't that bad Aaron must say. The foods and drinks taste good, there few jokes that funny and he able to make connection with many people and gather information as well. Though he can use with less worship and argument between the women. Seriously, what the flying fuck? No, really, what in name of hell just happened? Until now his mind still trying to put the puzzle and comprehend of the women attitude to him. He is no stranger to affection, few girls had crushing on him in past after all, he even had girlfriend too. However never in his life that he. He was fighting for like this. Granted he knew that crush, Amelia, felt and Priscilla not fighting for his affection, however it's still clear that they fight to get him because they will need him to reach for the throne. Though Amelia already have him and the other right now trying to take him away from her. Seriously in his whole life never he thought he would be so. Adored and wished like this. It was mind-boggling in highest level, for some reason that kind of idea is more shocking that founding himself teleported to another world that very different from his original. Probably because the idea that multiple women fighting over a single man is should be ridiculous in any world no matter what. Back to the point, right now he was truthfully quite grateful to have short time being alone. Crush and Anastasia seems talking with their own respective general and one who led their army, felt already go back to bed early due to fall asleep, Priscilla herself is nowhere to be seen. As for Amelia? Well. He also didn't see her. To be honest it's not like Aaron don't like her or don't want to spend time with her, it just she need to expand by herself. She need to learn to be alone without him, need to make conversation with other, that is why he tried to distance himself during the party. And thankfully it seems working and Amelia herself also seems realize about that as well. A positive effect, he expect no less after she saw Excalibur's light after all. Aaron? Ah, speak of the devil or is think of the devil, and they shall come. Aaron thought as he turned around and see the half-elf standing there, Emmy, hi. He greeted. That what you say? Hi. Amelia inquired with quirking eyebrow. Hello your majesty. He tried again. The half-elf pouted, puffing her cheeks in petulant manner, prompting Aaron to snort. What else you want me to say anyway? Aaron asked. Nothing. Amelia sighed in exasperation. Aha. Uh -huh. Aaron merely let out small hum, do you enjoy the party? Amelia perked up, her face confronted to happy expression, yes. She answered, this is actually the first time for me to attend party outside like this, and I'm very much enjoying it. Is that so? Aaron smiled back glad that the half-elf enjoying her time, good for you then. Un. Amelia's smile become more radiant if possible, a sign that she really enjoying what she just went through and the sight made Aaron blinked once. Were he is lesser men Aaron sure he going to kneeling to the ground and exclaim his undying love to her, Amelia really that beautiful after all, however he is not lesser man and so he merely admiring the view. Ogling beautiful girl is not that uncommon after all, one must enjoy something that given right? How about you Aaron? Amelia asked, unknowingly bringing her friend out from his stupor. Well. Aaron began to recall everything more details. Shaking hands with few people dash one of them that stand out is old man named Rohan Historia, Wilhelm's friend, while making new network, trading joke in here and there, got bothered by Anastasia and Priscilla numerous time, trading sarcastic words with Crush, dragged around by Felt and Liliana. Not completely fun time, especially when related to Anastasia and Priscilla but. I guess it's fine. He said with chuckle. It's fine. Amelia asked. While I do enjoy the foods, jokes, companies, and other thing but there few times it bring nothing but annoyance. He answered Anastasia and Priscilla to be precise. Amelia jaw twitched a bit when heard the name of the two women, something that not missed by Aaron's sharp eyes as he currently observing, more like ogling, her fully. Those two. Amelia lips curled down into frown, are they really that bother? Anastasia. 
Not really, I kinda enjoy talking with her. Priscilla. Yes, very much so. The silver-haired girl feel another unknown bad feeling wash over her. She still not understand much truthfully what she felt now, granted she has idea of what it was, but it impossible. Anastasia-san and Priscilla-san. Amelia licked her lips, they both beautiful aren't they? Aaron blinked at the sudden strange question, he tilted his head slightly and contemplating the answer, well. I won't deny that they both attractive women. I like Anastasia's hair tonight and Priscilla herself is actually not a bad sight. He said. He about to continue but paused when see Amelia seems behaving in strange manner. The girl seems uncomfortable and judging by her face that troubled it safe to say that she doesn't like what she heard for some reason. Oh. Oh dear. Please don't tell him this is going to the way where he think is. Quick Aaron. Distraction. Emmy. Is there something you want to say? Open mouth and insert your damn foot there. He want to divert the conversation. Not make path or at least open alternative one for it to continue. God damn it. You have one job Aaron. One job. Nothing. Amelia denied an instant, hands waving in slight frantic manner. Aaron was glad she responded with that, now he have solid reason to not pry and open the path. Thanks God for Amelia nervousness. They both fell silence, Aaron stare at the stars that swim around the dark night with vacant face, Amelia who found the ground seems interesting for some reason. It was awkward atmosphere. And yet, for some reason the two do not mind to spend their time like that, it was strange but it can't be denied that the silence was comfortable for them. I never told you about myself right? Huh? Aaron blinked and he turned to Amelia who stare at the far away with longing expression. My past. Amelia murmured, I never told you about it. It's not something that I care much. Aaron remarked, your past is your own secret, I don't want to pry since it would be disrespectful. More like he already know almost everything about her, however the main reason is if he didn't pry then she also won't pry about his past. He don't want to share his past to her after all, what should he say? That he come from world where she is nothing but a fictional character, designed to have tragedy background and because she was written like that and her story used as entertainment? Yeah, that was something that she left behind and never mentioned to her. I think after what you done to me until now you deserve to know. Amelia replied, her voice soft and kind like always. Aaron doesn't know how to respond to that so he only silence and stare at the silver-haired girl, allowing her to continue. Do you know that Elier Forest is frozen? Amelia asked rhetorically, you probably did, their mention of it in document after all. She answered her own question with humorless chuckle, it has been frozen for hundred years or probably even more. What caused it is unknown, but Elier Forest was used to be habitats by elves, by my kin, before it frozen. I, myself also don't remember much about them to be honest how it come to that, however it seems the forest is not the only thing that got frozen, but the entire elves in there as well. I was also one of them, one of those who frozen, I was unfrozen by Puck. At that time I don't know anything, I don't remember much, only my name and things that people normally should know. I don't have memories about anyone, family, friends, or anything else, Puck is the only one who has been there. He said that probably because I was frozen for so long that it affected my memories. When I asked him to unfroze other he said he can't do that, the magic that frees the forest and my people is too strong and potent, Puck only able to unfroze me because my ice was the weakest for some reason and that still take a lot from him to set me free. And I admit that I. I am lonely to be honest. Her voice become murmur, her eyes felt stung, I love Puck dearly, he is like my father even if we are not related, but deep down I know that I. Can't solely be depend on him. No matter how I laugh, chat, playing, and spending time with him but I can't help to not feel satisfied for some reason. It wasn't enough, I want to have another company, that was what I thought, that was what I want. Yet I know that I don't deserve to think of such thing, I'm half-elf, among all of my people I was the one that somehow able to be freed from the prison, I should be grateful just because of that. But I'm not. How could I? I. I don't know. I don't know. Everything is a mess. I don't have right to think of such thing, I should be satisfied with that, but for some reason I'm not. I envy other who's so free, so happy, but I don't have right to. I have appearance that's similar like Satella, the witch of envy that has devoured half of the world, I'm only half elf, so how could I? There chance that those who frozen in forest be there because of mean dash. She was cut off from her continuing her story by hand that grab her and pull her to hug. Letting out gasp, 
she look up and notice Aaron has embraced her with one arm, his eyes half opened, and his face look somber. She accept his embrace fully, happily, and with tears streaming over her eyes she basked in his presence. To be honest she was never being hugged by anyone save for Puck, this is the first time that someone else other than the cat spirit hugging her. And it was nice. It was warm. Everyone has right to be selfish. He stated softly, you does not need to continue your words, I understand. He don't want to listen further, he don't want to hear any further. Enough is enough. He don't want to hear her speaking like that because he knew that was the truth. Because it was her who truly frees the forest, along with everyone inside it, and the attack also targeting her in first place. Just the thought of her realizing that in future is already painful enough for him. It was already sad enough when he read it, however now he was here, he was befriend with her, he was standing with her. It becomes sort like a tragedy. I know. Her words snapped him from his inner conflict, he looked down and see the half-elf staring at him with beautiful smile, her tears already dry. It wasn't wrong to be selfish, I know that. She said softly, every living being always have desire, that mean I also have right or desire for something. Aaron stared at the silver-haired girl for few seconds, then he retract his hand, smile blossoming across his face, yes, that was true. Amelia smiled and tilt her head slightly, I don't remember about my past, but when I saw that light, I see two person that precious to me. Really? Aaron asked gently. Yes, I have aunt and her friend, my caretaker. Amelia answered, her violet eyes glimmering with happiness, they love me. I'm glad to hear that. What else that he could say other than that? He is happy for her, she has grown. No longer she is fragile girl that eaten by her own self-loathing and guilt, she has take her step now. Make no mistake she is not yet mature and strong fully, however right now she has realized what her flaw is, and she has accept them without hesitation. Right now she may be still not ready, but soon, soon she will. She already start in the right path after all. Aaron close his eyes and smile, feeling proud for some reason at the sight that stand before him. With this. Perhaps when the time come. When he about to leave. Amelia will be ready. Aaron Sama, Amelia Sama. A familiar voice calling over them and broke Aaron from his stupor, he tilt his head and see Rem standing over there, holding a tray that filled with food and drink. R.E.M. Hello. Aaron greeted, I did not see you in party. Rem was the main chef so unfortunately Rem can't be present. The blue Oni lamented with sad expression, Rem was wishing she can be on Aaron Sama's side at that time. Aaron chuckled, well you're here now aren't you? Yes, Rem got early rest. Rem beamed, by the way Aaron Sama, does Rem bothering you right now? HM. No, not real. Aaron trailed off when noticed the blue Oni gazed down at his direction, he follow her eyes and found what actually strange, Emmy, can you release me? He asked. The half-elf still clutching on him, hugging his body like koala, that send image of Amelia in koala costume and made his lips twitched a bit, latching to a tree. Aya. Yes, yes. She said that but her action contradicting her words as her hug become more tight and she actually glaring at Rem. Little Emmy glaring at big bad Oni Rem. Aaron clearly doesn't know how to make good comment for that. Emmy. He called once again, his voice become firmer. And it did a job this time as the half-elf release her grip from him, she huffed her cheeks and turned away, refusing to meet his face. Aaron right eye twitched. Gods, what the hell is wrong with her? She behave so strangely. Now is not time to act like this. Aaron Sama Rem bring you special food. Rem said as she hold the tray with smile. Aaron stare at the food that offered and he beamed, special food? He asked, he noted that it was some kind of steak that has been sliced in small portions, he took fork that in the plate and taste the food, hmm. It's. It's. Good. Like really good. Aaron knew that Rem is very good in cooking, had she opened restaurant in modern world her place would become 5 stars, he sure of that. However what he just eat now? What he just eat? Gods, if footgasm truly exist I think I just experience one. Aaron thought wistfully. The meat was firm and yet delicate, it remind him of beef steak. However at same time their texture that unlike beefs, it the fat mainly, it has unique taste, the more he bite it the more it spread to his mouth. Aaron? He broken out from his hazy and pleasant world when hear Amelia's voice. He turned and blinked when see the half-elf face was red for some reason. Yes Emmy? He asked. Was. She seems embarrassed for some reason, was it really that good? 
Huh. Ah, uh, yes, yes, yes it is really that good. Aaron said with full conviction. He turned to Rem and blinked again when see the blue oni face also red, however that was only registered to his mind for a moment as something more important, Rem. This is the best food I ever ate. What Aaron doesn't realize is both girls blushing because when he ate the food, he unconsciously let out moan that filled with pure ecstasy. Of course hearing the usual calm and prideful man making sound like that was very rare occasion. And it wasn't bad to herd. A ah. Is. Is that so? Rem face was still red, RM glad that you love it to the point you want to marry REM. She said as she put hands over her blushing cheeks. If you made food like this every day then I might be. Eh. Rem let out dumbfounded voice, her face show taken back expression, eh. 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 Her mind seemed shut down for a moment as her face turned to full red, she did not expect the man to return her statement like that, image of her and Aaron clad in beautiful dress and suit while marching to wedding stage crossed to his mind. Aaron. Amelia once again feel that strange feeling to her stomach, you can't be serious. Well. Aaron turned to her, I did considering it you know. I mean. He gestured to his plate, this food is really good. Like really good. He take another piece and pop it to his mouth, letting out another pleasant moan, gods, this is really good. He murmured. Amelia glared at the food for some reason, wishing it to disappear, she turned to Rem with look, just what is that anyway? Ah. Rem broken from her moment and regain her composure an instant, that was Hakugiai's meat. Hakugiai's. Meat? Amelia repeated, sounded dumbfounded, you mean, that was Hakugiai. She demanded while pointing to the plate. Yes. Rem admitted with smile. Aaron meanwhile stare at the plate with scrutinizing look, apparently he doesn't seem bothered like Amelia who making choking noise, but I thought the remain of the beast already. Well, there's some flesh that still remain around the horn. It's not much but Rem managed to collect and clean them all then serving it. Rem informed, her chest puffed a bit in proud manner before they deflated, though they're only small left, the rest of the meat already not fresh anymore. I. I see. Aaron looked at the plate with disappointment, which mean he no longer can eat this, this is probably the last portion. Just thinking of it make him sad. Don't worry Aaron Sama. Rem said instantly when noticed the man started to look like his puppy got kicked, there's still two great demon beast. Rem shall hunt the horned rabbit for you. She declared, the idea of how ridiculous it sounds was lost from her mind for a moment due to image of Aaron's confessing his undying love to her that appear once more. That's right. The horned rabbit. Aaron snapped from her short sad moment as he recall about that particular beast, I heard it can duplicate itself right? Which mean it would be endless supply of meats. And if the meats was as good as Hakugiai's. He can feel his saliva started to merge just by thinking that. Yes. Good, then after this we shall start expedition to hunt them. Beware horned rabbit for your days has numbered. Don't you two realize just what you two just said? Amelia asked with exasperated at the duo who seems lost in their own world, the duo seems surrounded by some kind of barrier right now. You right. Aaron nodded with serious face, we can't just start the hunt, it won't be good, however it will be better if we make them come to us and dash. That's not what I mean. Amelia yelled at the man rambling, she then take hold of his shoulders and start to shaking the man, Aaron snap out of it. Don't go to some weird place. It was comical sight seeing Amelia was shorter than Aaron and yet right now the man was shaken like a rag doll by the girl and said the man seems lost from the world and now still wandering in his own mind. In the end it take full five minutes but our beloved half-elf managed to bring the man back to the real world. Right, right. Aaron coughed as he regained his composure, sorry for that, it seems my stomach managed to take hold of my mind for a moment. Indeed, Rem also caught by her own imagination. Rem said as she look ashamed to herself, Rem knew Aaron Sama would have strong effect, but knowing that Rem still got caught. As expected from Aaron Sama, he is truly magnificent. No, 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 you got caught because of your own mind I slash he had nothing to do with it. Aaron and Amelia thought simultaneously with dull gaze. Anyway, Rem happy that Aaron Sama enjoy the food. Rem said with smile, however Rem come here not just to give that food. Rem have something to say to Aaron Sama something to say. Aaron asked, he looks curious about it, so do Amelia who stand on his side, what is it? Rem only silence for a moment, her blue eyes stare at the man that has insert himself to her life and bring her out from her darkest moment. 
she take one deep breath and letting it out slowly, she can feel their part of her that unsure about this, insecure and telling her to not doing this, but she ignore them all. She already made her resolve, she no longer uncertain about the future, she already think about the path that she will take for sure. She won't back down and trap herself anymore. And with that resolve, the blue-haired maid meet the man that precious and irreplaceable for her. Rem love Aaron Sama. She care to him and she look up to him. That was what she thought not long after he opened her path in that fateful night, in the night when he pull her out from her own darkness and introduce her to bigger world, when he push her forward and gently guide her to her path. She look up to him because he always strong and devoted. He is not invincible, not almighty, their side of him that fragile, weak, and vulnerable. Yet he able to use that weakness as pillar for his strength, he able to maneuver his fragile point and use it to his advantage. Because she knew that he was uncertain about something, about the future. She knew because she always observe him, she had seen how he unsure and hesitate, knew that there's something that worrying him greatly, yet when things come down he won't hesitate to move and ready to take responsible for his act. And she care to him because why not? He is like a role model to her, someone who she looked up, he is someone who guide her in every steps that she started to take ever since she began to expand her world. Is it wrong to care to someone that great? No, of course not. And she realized that she actually in love with him when he fell to coma after his battle against the witch cult that invading their village. She never dread and terror so much in her life when Lady Amelia bring his unconscious body back with tears, not end in there that night his body temperature began to rise and he started to burning himself from inside, the fever he got was enough to give red mark to those who touch him. Touching him was so hard due to his body temperature, and using magic is out of question since the moment Beatrice tried to heal him she was thrown back to the wall with a force that enough to made crack in there. To be honest Rem doesn't know how in name of gods that he managed to survive with that kind of condition, and she never wished for him to went through that kind of thing again. Just remember him laying unconscious and so vulnerable made Rem's heart broke. And when she start to shed her tears and cry that she realize she doesn't want to lose him, but not end in there, Rem can't imagine how she would continue to live without him. And at that time as well she realized that she not just care and look up to him, she has fall in love with him without she knowing it. But it did not elate her, as matter of fact it made her horrified. Because the man that now put shocked face in front of her going to leave one day. He did not even try to deny it, he has said it to her, declaring that he will leave one day, he won't be in Ludnica forever, he will go back to where he came from, for his little sister, for his family. He will leave them. And the idea of missing him in her life is more than enough to bring tears to her eyes and broke her mind. She don't want him to leave, she don't want him to go, she want to be with him, until the end, to be with him until time tear them apart. She want to follow him when he leave, she want to accompany him, seeing his smile and struggle, seeing he go out with his charming and warm grin. But she can't. She can't because she have her sister. Her sister who has been enduring pain for her, shouldering years of burden that she caused in very first place. Leaving her sister is out of option, Rem better sentence to hell or endless years of torture than leaving her behind, she won't leave her behind after what she has done to her. And so her feeling of love while bring enormous joy and happiness to her heart but at same time also carry unadulterated terror. She don't know what to do. She don't know what she should do. And she only can pray to any gods that should the time come she would be ready, though Rem doubt that she would in the end. However after seeing that light. The world will always be cruel but we all have to find the strength to move on. Push it back. Stand on your feet, look to the front and shove it back. Do not hesitate, do not waste your youth, move forward. Embrace every day with a smile, because right now your life is beautiful REM stop blinding yourself with the past. REM. He started, his voice filled with shock, what? Did you? Rem love Aaron Sama. She said it again, this time with smile that radiant, Rem love Aaron Sama when he sleep and mumbling in morning, Rem love Aaron Sama when he eat while laughing, Rem love Aaron Sama when he training in the backyard while putting serious face. Rem love Aaron Sama when he smile while joking, Rem love the way Aaron Sama's eyes lighten up when he think about something mischief. Rem love Aaron Sama with all Rem's heart. Every words that come out from her mouth, all of them contain her pure and genuine feeling, she pour all of her affection to them, not one sentence was spoken without love, she make sure of that. And he was speechless, his jaw that opened slightly, his eyes that widened, she can see her confession to him caught his guard off completely. R.E.M. He spoke again, their hesitation and uncertainty in his voice, R.E.M. I. Rem know that one day. Aaron Sama will go to the place that Rem can't follow, one day Rem will no longer able to stand on Aaron Sama's side. 
She said softly, but until that time come, Rem shall serve Aaron Sama. She exclaimed, Rem shall be there until the time come. She stated, her face broke into smile, that would be fine right? Rem I. H.E. close his eyes and then slowly he take one deep breath before exhale it, Rem I'm happy to hear that. He replied in gentle voice, you showing such resolve. Then his face turned to one of sad expression, but Rem I don't. I'm flattered, you are beautiful girl Rem but dash. Aaron Sama doesn't love R.E.M. She finished for him, Rem know that. She knew about it ever since the beginning, he doesn't love her. To him she is someone who like a student, someone that he tutor and teach, someone that he guide and led. And it's hurt her to know that her love is unrequited, unreturned, that fact is really hurt and nearly broke her heart but, but it's fine, like Rem said, Rem doesn't mind, she will serve Aaron Sama until the end. But what about Ram? He asked an instant, their hint of plea and confusion in his voice. Aaron Sama can rest assured that Rem won't leave Naysama. Rem answered in reassuring voice, Rem shall serve Aaron Sama until that time come, after Rem's service done, Rem will return to Naysama. She will never leave her sister, not forever at least, she will return to her after she done, after the man she loved leaving and no longer be with them. But during that span of time, Rem will make sure that every single day she went through with her will be treasured and saved to her soul. The man of her affection was silent, his expression pensive and vacant, not a shred of emotion exist in there. However his eyes, Rem cannot decipher it but she at least knew there's something in there, their conflict exists inside him, she can see that much through his eyes. There is no stopping you isn't it? He asked, his voice filled with resignation, no matter what I say, you still going to do as you wish. Nope. Rem said cheerfully, Rem will stay with Aaron Sama until the end, Aaron Sama has no say in this matter at all. What a selfish words, is that how someone should confess their love? HM. Rem think Aaron Sama who reject Rem's genuine confession have no right to say something like that. He blinked at her come back, once, twice, then he cracked a grin, well, it seems the blue demon indeed is sister of pink demon. Of course, Rem not as magnificent as Naysama but Rem has her own merit. Rem declared while puffing her nose and smiled smugly. It seems has some effect as the blonde eyes widened briefly and quickly avert his eyes from her, Rem caught tint of red in his cheeks and it make her squeal in joy internally. Aaron Sama embarrassed face is so cute. Aryam. Aaron. The Oni blinked once and turned around, so do the man she love, they both face the half-elf who has witnessing everything that just happened and remain silence, for the first time she has spoken. I, I don't understand. Her voice filled with confusion, what? What do you mean Rem? Aaron? She asked, Rem, you said Aaron don't love you, that was impossible, he love you. She then turned back to Aaron, and Aaron, what Rem mean by that? She love you so why? This is it. This is the reason why she come here, why she decide to declare her feeling not privately but when the man he love is with Lady Amelia. Emmy. Aaron spoke, sounding hesitate and uncertain. Aaron Sama love R.E.M. Rem said kindly, but not the way Rem love him. I. What does that even mean? Amelia's voice was clear saying that she quite frustrated, what actually? That is not something woman should ask. Rem replied with smile, what Amelia Sama witnessed today, you shouldn't ask it to anyone but think about it by yourself. She moved her gaze to Aaron after saying that and she can see the blonde have thoughtful expression, his eyes narrowed in calculating manner, no doubt right now the man started to think what the purpose of her doing this. Why she confessing her feeling in front of another woman? That was must be what he asked inside his mind. Well. Rem doubt that Aaron Sama would be able to decipher it completely. Make no mistake, he is maybe smart and sharp, however he's still not completely aware of how maiden feeling work, he is a bit dense after all. Maybe he will be able to in future when he understand more about woman but as for now. Well, good luck for that. Aaron Sama, for tonight, can you do something for Rem? Huh? He blinked and seemed snapped from his stupor, something. Yes, yes, sure. He said, what is it? Will Aaron Sama kiss Rem? Eh. KKKK kiss? Amelia squawked, kissing you. You. You want to be kissed by Aaron too? Her face was scarlet now. Not just her, it seems the man in question also not expecting that request judging by his face that become full red. K kiss? He sputtered, ah Rem, I I D don't think that dash. Rem take one step forward and smile to him, her cheeks also adorned by red hue but her gaze remain firm as she stare at his emerald eyes, just for tonight. She spoke softly. 
Their sharp intake of breath come from him, his red adorable face is a sight for Rem, she will memorize it until she died, it was rare occasion after all, this is the first time seems embarrassed so much like this. F fine. He said after small moment of silence, B but only for tonight okay? Yes. Rem smiled and Rem wanted on the lips, not cheeks, forehead, hands or other. She added. The pseudo saber lips twitched upward briefly, obviously amused at her demand that detailed. He then takes step forward as well, his hand extended however he paused suddenly. The blue oni noticed that in less than a second his eyes wandered to Amelia, gauging her response. And the half-elf was frozen, her hand clasped together over her chest, her cheeks still red, her lips trembling, and the demons see there's something beneath those violet eyes that's shaking. Something has born inside her, a new feeling, one that Rem recognized and very familiar with. Good. This is the point of doing this after all. The blue-haired maid feel the one she love capture her waist, his hands snake to her and pull her closer to him, and Rem meet face to face with him. His cheeks still red, however he no longer look embarrassed, he was smiling slightly as matter of fact and Rem feel her heart start to beating faster. Despite it was her who demand for the kiss but part of her right now wished to hide under the ground to cover her embarrassment. Fortunately that part was kicked, punched, slammed by something like Morningstar, buried, sealed and then thrown Aawai by her inner maiden that squealing in delight and anticipation. Then his lips come to her. And it felt nothing but divine for her. The kiss was as she expect nay, it was better than she expected. The moment their lips meet Rem feel her world explode in ecstasy. The moist and soft lips of him, the warm and hot breath that come out through his mouth, it was so full of life, full of energy, she don't know how but she feel her exhaustion lifted up slightly to the point she can't help but moan under his kiss. It was only few seconds, perhaps 10 or 12, however for her it was like hours, and when their lips parted away with single strand of Deliva, Rem was very tempted to jump at him and devour his lips once more. Fortunately she still have enough self-control to refrain herself from doing that, not to mention one of Aaron's hands also pressed to her shoulder so she can't jump to him. W was it really that good? Amelia asked. Rem's mind meanwhile still lingering to the kiss, her eyes glazed and her brain right now still flying in cloud of heaven but she still managed to answer the question. Yes, yes it is. She said absent-mindedly. Their sounds of n feel come from the half-elf as she huffed her red cheeks, then she turned to Aaron. And me too. Hey Aaron kiss me too. She demanded. Heck no. Aaron answered swiftly. W what? W W Y. You K kiss Anastasia San and also Rem. Why I can't too? I'm your friend right? Yes, and that exactly the reason why I don't kiss you. The half-elf sputtered at the retort, B but you kiss Rem. S she is your friend. I, I want one too. That kind of kiss is not something that normal friend shared to each other, and you also not understand the meaning of that kiss. The half-elf glared at her friend, if her look can hurt then right now Aaron would be writhing in ground, alas it is not and to be honest her glare is anything but intimidating with her cheeks that red, even Rem admit that right now Lady Amelia is kind of adorable. T then. Then if I understand about T that K kiss. You will K kiss me right? The pseudo saber unamused face turned to one of pensive and he fell into silence, then he spun from his standing point and began to walk away. Good night Emmy, Rem, I want to sleep. WW Aaron. Aaron. Don't you dare. Aaron. Stop right there you nincompoop. As the duo started to walking back to mansion, Rem still trapped in her own world with silly but cute smile plastered over her face. His face was so content, so serene, there no frown or scowl in there, his face was pensive and devoid of any emotion in reality but it looked peaceful and sincere. They can't help but compare him to a boy instead of fierce warrior while watching him sleep like this. And it is not wrong for them to compare him to baby, because to them he is like a kid, a boy that not even reach his pubescent age. Briefly their eyes wander to the table that not far from his bed, they approach the furniture, their gaze focused to certain object, a book, one that look old and tattered slightly, a sign that it has been opened for many times. The being stared at the book without any shred of emotion, they stay there, their eyes were pensive and hold nothing but empty gaze, as if trying to dig hold to the book by their eyes. They were silent and keep staring like a statue for almost full five minute. Then they extend their hand, reaching for the book, slowly, carefully, and... Who's there? They halted their movement when sharp and wary voice cut through the silence night, they turned their heads so fast that it almost like there no bone in their neck, and they granted by sight of the boy now wake up and sit on the bed. 
Interesting, this boy was sleep moment ago, they sure of that, and judging by how he looks they was sure he would awake tomorrow or in next few hours. However right now, the boy was look like he never slept in first place judging by his fierce expression, it as if he was pretending to sleep moment ago. Which is not since they know the truth. An alarm system that installed perhaps? One that linked to the boy possibly. Then they saw the boy eyes widened, their emotions come from there, lining from shock, surprise and recognition. The last one was. Pretty interesting since this is actually their first meeting. I knew I get it right when I sense you this noon. He said, it was very small, but I will never be able to forget your presence even if it only barely exist. He detect them. Once again, interesting. And the way he put his words also. Ah. You had meet me in your loop. The boy's eyes narrowed slightly, and he crossed his arm, and you aware about it. He replied, of course you do, it shouldn't be surprised given who you are in first place. Oh make number one, another zero. Here is my oath. I am the one who becomes all the good of the world of the dead, I am the one who lays out all the evil of the world of the dead. You, seven heavens clad in three words of power, arrive from the ring of deterrence, O oh keeper of the balance. Kiritsugu's sight darkened. The Amiya family crest, that was passed down through the generations and carved on his back, began to separately chant the incantation as individual entities in order to support Kiritsugu's thaumaturgy. Kiritsugu's heart, in a dimension that escaped his mind's control, began to beat rapidly like a hurrying clock hand. His flesh that was tormented by the prana gathered from the air had already forgotten its functionalities as a human, instead, it had turned into a component of the mysterious ceremony, into a circuit that purely connected the ethereal with the material. Kiritsugu gave no thought to the severe pain created by this discord that was enough to make one want to scream out loud, and concentrated on pronouncing his incantation. Even the presence of Irisville, who stood beside him holding her breath, was no longer present in his consciousness. And after he done, his vision that darkened this time blasted by immense light that come out from the magic circle. Then he come out from that light. He was head taller than Iris Veal with blonde hair that looked like sprinkled by a golden dust, his figure is lean and robust, his face is clearly more than enough to categorize him as handsome, not end in there it also somehow show majestic aura of royally. He was clad in silver armor that topped over dark blue robes that billowing from his appearance. Just by seeing this man, Kiritsugu has no doubt anymore who he has summoned. King Arthur. Iris Veal breathed out, her voice was filled with awe. Yes, this man is without doubt Arthur Pendragon, the legendary king of Britain. Then he opened his eyes, green emerald orbs revealed to the world. Upon your summoning, servant saver have come. He declared aloud, voice powerful and strong, his firm gaze shifted to him and his wife, I ask you, are you my master? Yes, yes I am. Kiritsugu answered, then something what his servant just said registered to his mind. Servant saver. Irisville asked, voicing what Kiritsugu have in mind, not saber. No, I am saver. He confirmed, he then closed his eyes and seems in deep thought, that was the class one summoned by the grail for some reason instead of saber. Well. Root be damned, a foreign class. It just his luck isn't it? What the hell even saber mean to anyway? What can you tell us about your class? Kiritsugu asked an instant. It class of those who has saved the world from disaster and destruction. Saber answered him, heroic spirit of salvation, that was what the grail informed to me. Nothing else. Kiritsugu clicked his teeth in annoyance, great, just great, incomplete information. An heroic spirit of salvation? For some reason the Magus killer found himself frowned at that title. Save the world? Irisville asked again, head tilted slightly, but. There is no legend about King Arthur that he has saved the world. Then his servant smiled, and Kiritsugu doesn't like that smile, it was filled with mischief and joke, well too bad for you milady, I'm not King Arthur. Kiritsugu intakes of breath quickened for moment, not King Arthur. Then who are you? Have you ever heard the legend about King Arthur went to Avalon when he pass away and how he shall return when the world need him? Saver asked rhetorically, I was summoned based on that legend. Ah. Iris Veal make understanding face, and when you come you going to save the world. She said, that is why you have Saver, heroic spirit of salvation, class. Correct. 10 point for Gryffindor. He replied with approving smile. Huh? To who? Nothing, just an internal joke. Saver chuckled, so master, what should we do now? Kiritsugu already could feel headache coming just when he asked that question. What should he do now? 
go back to old man act and demand that waterfall bearded grandpa to explain what the hell is going on? Come on IRA, let's go back with to castle. He said in monotone as he spun around and leaving, follow a saver. He ordered without looking at him. Irisville spare small glance to Saver before she smiled to him, and the smile returned by Saver kindly and follow her husband. Saver's smile instantly gone when the couple back faced to him, his right eye twitched once and he palming his face while start walking and sigh internally. Right, first re, zero, and now fate slash zero, what the hell would be next? Zero notes a kaima. Saver thought with annoyance. Great gods, please don't be like that, that world is as dark as re, zero, not to mention he will dealing with annoying master. Though he sure his charisma would win over Louise, and. On second thought Zero no Tsukaima would be fine, I won't fight against king of motherfucking heroes, Gilgamesh and Grail that contain god who represent all evil in the world and dash. Oh who is he thinking about, knowing his luck, even if he goes to Zero no Tsukaima he would face some kind of monster that equal or as much as terrifying as Ingramayu in the ends. If you like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you later, bye bye.